What's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Academy Podcast. Today's episode, we have yet another El Paso-based athlete. His name's Aaron Moreno. He used to play at Malwood High School and is currently playing college soccer. Don't forget to hit that like, subscribe, and hit the bell notification for more podcast videos and more Chuko FC content. Thank you so much for watching and enjoy the podcast. Ready? Yes, sir. All right, we'll start off with your background and take it from here. Just tell us where you come from. Uh, all right, well, um, you know, I didn't really pick up a ball like a lot of people did. Um, the culture around here is at like five years old, you're already, you know, dribbling a ball. You're already, you know, trying to kick the goal, playing in your first couple games. But I didn't really start playing soccer competitively until high school. I played in the middle school leagues, you know. I was in the team with Damien in the, in the co-eds. So it was it was fun, you know. It was a fun game to play. I had I liked it more than uh, baseball. I know my brother likes that football. All the other sports that I tried, it was just something that I could just run for days and just, you know, there was always opportunities. You know, like in soccer, I always feel like opportunities in the game just always happen. And sure enough, in high school, that was like the greatest example. Is, you know, I I started off on my tryouts. I was you know pretty pretty confident because you know in my in my middle school I scored a couple goals. I was fast. And, um, you know, I was, I was really excited to try out for a high school team. And, but sure enough, you know, life hits you hard. It, it, it tells you the truth. And my first trial was horrible. I mean, I had defenders putting me on the ground. You know, shoot, I was the skinniest kid out there. Bodied out left and right. I mean, I was nobody there. And sure enough, I mean, in my head, I was like, you know, I heard my program is pretty, you know, not good. They didn't have a good reputation at the time. We were like, I don't even think we even made playoffs a lot. So I just, I had that mentality was, you know, if that's the case, I can make the varsity team like easy. And sure enough, I didn't even make both teams. Like both of them, not, not the varsity, not the JV. Like it was awful. You know, it was, it was really, it was, it was a sucky, sucky feeling. Like, uh, I hate that feeling. But the fact that, you know, the the JV coach, you know, he gave me an opportunity. He gave me another chance. You know, he just he said, "You have potential." You know, I, I see, I see the heart, I see the the grit, I see you not giving up. Like that's very hard to find in these players. A lot of these players are talented, but they don't care. You know, they ain't really to do the hard work. And he's like, "I'm gonna give you a chance. You're gonna be the manager. You're gonna be the ball boy. You're gonna be the water boy. You're gonna you're gonna do whatever. You know, I I need you to do, but I'll let you practice with us." You're not in the squad yet. You're not promised the jersey. You got to work it. I was like, you know what? I'll take it. You know, like something is better than nothing. Yeah, I'm going to be, you know, I'm going to be the, the the donkey of the team. You know, I'm going to have to carry everything, but I'm, I'm on the team. You know, I'll take it. And from day one, from practice, I never took it for granted. I, I Every day I felt like I had something to prove, you know. Yeah. Everyone there, they, they told me, they were like, oh, who is this dude? You know, I heard it from the team. Like, and I get it. I mean, shoot, now now that I, I have the skills that I have, um, you know, blessed, blessed to have the skills and be able to have the time to, to, you know, work on it. And now I understand what they were thinking because I've, I've played with people where, you know, they're lazy or they, they don't work on their touch as much as they should and or they're not thinking two steps ahead, you know, like, great player to, uh, attributes, you know, and it's, and so I get it, but, you know, it just fueled me, you know, mm -hmm. there was times where like, I took it to heart and I was like, you know, what? like, uh, I hate this feeling. Like I hate these guys, whatever, but in the end, I just needed to be better. And so when it was, and whenever it was conditioning, I never complained. I was like, you know what? I got to do it. Boom. Hit the mile run. If it was sprints, had to do it too, you know? And sure enough, like, you know, day by day just went by and I was just getting it little by little. Like, it wasn't perfect, but, shoot, I was having fun, learning the process, one touch, two touch, like, the basics of the game, you know? And even having my JV coach out of, like, crazy, you know, do was turning red every time. <laughs> but, you know, it was good. Like, it was a good feeling for me, at least, because, like, a lot of people were already learned. Like, they already had that in them. But for me, I was, I was learning day by day, and it was fun. Like, I was enjoying the sport more. And that's what made me, you know, keep playing. And sure enough, by season, like, you know, thank God I, I worked hard enough and I, I'll, I'll start right back.
yeah. freshman. Mm -hmm. Like, usually you don't hear that, you know? I, I mean, at least I didn't hear it a lot yeah. when I was playing. So it was good. And, and since then, like, it just took off. But, you know, like, freshman year was good. Sophomore year, I became the captain. Yeah, we didn't have the great season, but it was good to, you know, only one year and I was already a captain of a team. Um, I began playing city league ball, which was fun because, you know, it got me more exposure, got me more practices. I got to start when, focusing on, like, technique. When did you start uh, practicing uh, club soccer? It was in the summer after my freshman year. And, um, yeah, it was my first team. It was a, barely a brand-new team. The coach was barely uh, forming it. He was barely getting players. But it was a good little squad. Like, I'm not going to lie, it, he got – uh, players from two other teams and yeah we were a good little team I mean we were we were a very gritty team our midfield was technical but at, like the defense and the forwards weren't as much like I really wasn't as technical but I you know I gave Fresh it all team, right? yeah but I mean we were pretty good we, when we would go to tournaments we would play some pretty high team it was Forza United so I mean yeah. like it wasn't like a brand new you know it wasn't like a well-known club team but it was fun to play with them and I played with them for two years, so my freshman, sophomore year. Mm -hmm. So my JV years, that's when I played with them. But then, you know, like most club teams, you know, things happen, players, you know, argue, families get into it, whatever the case. So the, the team split up, and the coach was actually the one that brought me into Rush. Mm -hmm. He was the one that took us to a practice. We played them. You know, we got creamed. They, I think it was like 8-0. It was ridiculous, but I mean, we played them, and I, and I love. I think that's when I love soccer even more. Yeah. Or like you know, like it was just an increase of it because I saw them the way they were playing, and it was like no other team I've seen. And keep in mind, I mean, Forza we played in the PDN, which I mean, you're used to the PDN leagues, which is like, you know, the defense is the long ball. There's the long run, you know, those those kind of plays. And in the rush practice. <laughs> They were touching the ball. Ridiculous. The, the center backs were doing the tricks, crossovers, and then freaking send it to the winger. The winger would pace up, but then cut back, mm -hmm. play it down the middle. And then instead of just shooting it, the striker would cut back, lay it off. And, and then, you know, like just shit to fuck with the team. Yeah. And I loved it. Oh, my bad for the language, but it's just, you know, it was <laughs> yeah. just crazy. Like, like it's just mind blowing to see like an actual tiki taka, like, you know, like, as close as you can get to seeing Messi, Xavi, Iniesta, like, doing them, you know, that Barca team doing it. Yeah. And so that's what made me want to even learn more about possessing. That's what made me actually, like, actually watch soccer. I wasn't really a big soccer guy, like, watching it. Mm -hmm. I would watch the football games, basketball games, whatever. But to sit 90 minutes for a soccer game was very difficult for me. Like, I don't know. But once I started playing it, once I started understanding the sport, that's not like, oh, you know what? Like, okay, look, I can see what they're doing. Oh, I can see what he's trying to look for. Oh, okay. Like, that goal was top-notch, tiki-taka, you know? Yeah. And and then, like, even then, like, the players I, I played with, like, I think that's what helped me not quit. Because I think a lot of players, that's what they go through a lot of their times. And it's more than once. I mean, there's, there's times, I mean, recently I could tell you where I wanted to quit. But it's just – you got to have the right people motivating you, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, thankfully, I, I could say I had you, I had uh, uh, Tato, and those two were the ones where, you two were the ones where I was just like, you know what, like, my JV years, I, you know, I always hated it. You know, you know me, it was yeah, just us two. Was, I, no one liked us, like, whatever. We were the outcasts of the team. We accepted it. We didn't fight about it. We didn't care about it. We wanted to win. We wanted to play. That was it, you know? And, and I'm glad that varsity, once we got to the varsity level, level i'm glad you got to be there with me too at least for that year you know those two years and you were there you were always there motivating me still like there's people there there's not a lot of people out there that'll just keep pushing you yeah. there's people out there that once they take your spot like, who are you oh yeah all right yeah that's like not, yeah i get you so yeah. what, what was the hardest um i want to say la, the hardest phase of club soccer Ooh, right. i think i think the beginning just because for me it was a transition. At Marwood, I was taught as a defender, as long as they don't touch the back of the net, you're good. Mm -hmm. Like, if that means clearing it 20 yards, hey, man, you did your job. Like, yeah. it wasn't really the the soccer that that you're used to seeing on TV where he touches the ball, he turns his hips, he, you know, he has time, he possesses, he looks calm. Like, I was the defender that was just like, I'm going to go in there, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to wreck you take the ball away and then do what yeah. I got to do, you know? Yeah. yeah, clear it, pass it. If I can pass it and I have time, all right. But yeah. if, if you're coming close to me, I'll clear it. I don't mind it. Right. But there, like, 
when I started going to the practices, I remember the first month was just awful because the, their style of play was possession. It was play from the back, swing it to the left, to the right, play it to the middle. Like, you know, it was a lot of very, like, one-touch, two-touch ball, and I, my feet were not used to it. Yeah. So, of course, they give me the ball, boom, ball would bounce off. They stole, they stole the counterattack goal. Like, it was, it was very frustrating. I think that's when I realized, like, soccer <laughs> – I mean, people always say soccer is a simple sport. If you're really a soccer player, you understand that. You understand that statement, that soccer is a simple sport. But we just don't overcomplicate it. And it's a lot of little things that you got to really think about. Yes, it's a simple sport, but the technique of it, that's what, you know, that's what gets you past the level. Yeah. Yeah. And so since I didn't have that, since I didn't have that creativeness, I didn't have the vision being able to sit on the bench every Sunday because the games are in the Northeast. So I have to take 20 minute drive, be there on time, warm up, maybe not even play, have no minutes. Like that was a really tough, tough part. Cause I'm all what I was doing good. I was starting, you know, I was the captain of the team. Like, yeah, maybe I wasn't the best possessor again, the best technique defender, but I was, you know, I, I, was, I did enough for high school mm-hmm. and in, the in rush it was a very like you know elevated level that was the college experience that was the college exposure Mm -hmm. but you know thankfully it only took a month you know I got my opportunity one Sunday game and sure enough with the training you know the constant yelling by my coach the constant reminders from the team like I was able to you know play good that game and since then you know just being comfortable with the ball I mean now like as a player, I mean, you see me. We played, we played a little indoor not too long ago, and I was able to take on players. I, yeah. I can tell you right now, four or five years ago when I started, I was terrified to take on players because I, I knew I was going to lose it. It was almost guaranteed I was going to lose it. And now I'm over here, you know, like Trilling, trying to throw something. Off players. Players. Yeah, yeah, like try something, you know. I'm not afraid to like, yeah, I mean, I might still lose the ball. I'm not going to lie. But to at least try it, you know, to at least, like, learn from it. Play simple. So, I wait next time. Yeah, so I wait next time. You could just adjust, you know, like, oh, okay, I'm going to go this way next time, you know. Okay. All right. So, when you first moved to varsity, right, um, what do you feel was mo- the hardest part of high school soccer, technically? Because a, a lot of people look at high school soccer, the important part is varsity, right? Not mm-hmm. much JV. Yeah. JV is like your stepping stones to get to varsity, right? So, yeah. what would you say the hardest part of varsity soccer is high school and especially in El Paso I mean I, I don't know I can't speak for like all the other ones but in El Paso the, the league is tough like mm-hmm. the high school league every, almost every team is good luckily my senior year by then there was maybe like two or three teams that weren't as good they were like eh, they, they were on the on the low end but from what I can remember every year it was it was pretty hard so, so I think I think in general it would just be you know, the practices, because you're so used to, I was used to the rush practices, the possession and all that. And my high school coach, he was more into um, the defending. Yeah, he was more into like the basics, the, okay, well, we're going to, you know, 1v1 and then you're going to take off and shoot or like the shooting drill we would do where it was a lot of waiting around, you know. Yeah. I think that's what's difficult is as a, as a player, you, you, you tend to, um, you tend to prefer a certain way. So a lot of like the like the, the people I played with, if they were in rush, they were they were always complaining about their high school coach, like, oh like he wants us to launch the ball. Yeah. Or he wants us to play and I'm not used to it or whatever. And he gets mad when I dribble out the back or what and you know, it's like yes, at a point, like yes, we play a different style and high school is a different style. So varsity it was it was more of like a learning curve, like understand what he's trying to say, you know. We were a very defensive team, right? So we were working a lot of our defensive work. And that's what helped me is in varsity, I was helping a lot of the defensive stuff, the, the clean sheets, mm-hmm. you know? And I think that's, that, that was the hard part is keeping maintaining the clean sheets. Cause I mean, the high school ball, it was, it's very, you know, fast. It reminds me of the college ball mm-hmm. because the college ball is that too. It's very physical, maybe not as much technique, but if you're, if you have a good pace, you're strong build, you know, and you could take on players like, That'll get you on the starting squad. And in high school, I, I remember, like, football players would play. We had a couple of football players that would come into the soccer program, and they were fast. They were strong. But technical-wise, not really. So I think that's that's what was hard is defensively going up against that pace, going up against that strength. Because even in college, that's those are usually the, the difficult teams, the ones that have the quick, the, the quick wingers or the top 
forwards, the tall strikers, you know. Yeah. That would be the most difficult, the speed, the pace, the strength. Okay. All right. So right after high school, um, any awards that you won during high school? Uh, I did. I won, well, I won the, the JV MVP, but I mean, I, I consider that a good personal, you know, award. Yeah, because it um, took you two years, two years to really get to the performance of other players that are, have been already yeah. in varsity for quite a few years. Yeah, and I, I and I like to I like to have that. That's my little like you can do it. That was my that was my first trophy. That was like okay, like yes, you can win these. Like it's not just the number tens or the Messies or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, my junior year, I won the overall MVP of the team. Um, that one was like the the next proud moment. And then my senior year, I won defensive MVP. So I mean, I was very fortunate to have played with a good team, you know, and a very hardworking team, like. Every team that I played with at Maltwood was a very defensive team, mm -hmm. which was good. I mean, helping me, right, because I was a center back. So if we were a defensive team, hey, that's more hands on us. And then, I mean, there's Rush where we played a 3-5-2. So that's technically not a defensive team. You know, like that was more oh, us three defenders team. had to make sure we had our stuff down. Yeah. So I think at Maltwood, like when I won those awards, I think it was really good to feel that we had those many creatures. Because I could tell you at Rush, we didn't have that many. Yes, we got to score more goals on them, but I, I, I knew if we had a clean sheet there, it was amazing because it was very rare, you know. And at Mawood, those were good feelings, you know. It's always a good feeling when you get a clean sheet as a defender. Mm -hmm. All right, so then we're moving on to your college life. How'd you, how'd you get scouted, first of all? How'd you get scouted? And talk about your journey of how you went from high school to college, like right in between. Mm-hmm. Well, the my senior year, I was already looking into um, colleges, and I was actually number three from my class. So, you know, I had to keep the educational portion of me well suited to. So, I, I went to St. Mary's, mm -hmm. but I didn't have a scholarship, not not for soccer. I, I had it for academics, but I was, you know, I was willing to just walk on. I wasn't afraid to, you know, admit that I didn't get a scholarship, you know, like and just walk on, try it, you know. It was through NCAA. I, I saw the field. I fell in love with it. It was a nice field, nice cut grass. I mean, the team themselves, they were very technical, very good team. Um, but, yeah, I mean, just sadly, you know, just things don't work out. I mean, like, I was there. They gave me a week tryout. Um, they heard that I was from the Rush Academy, which, you know, thankfully was a good thing. And they gave me that week. And, you know, I, I had the – the the exercises were good you know i worked out good conditioning levels were good the 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 cone drills were good but when it came to the game i just i realized i wasn't ready for college i, re I really wasn't i wasn't fast enough i wasn't strong enough there was a, a forward um and he was tall six feet <sighs> took me on like nothing you know and scored a banger right like for, i mean that was the first play on the field my first play on the field and he scored a banger. So it was, it was a rough, it was a rough week. And I mean, I didn't make the team. So it was, it was too late to make any hasty decisions. I wasn't going to go back home. It was San Antonio. It was an eight hour drive, you know? So I decided to stick with it that year. And the next summer I was thankful again because of Rush. Uh, one of my friends, he was younger than me by a year. So he just graduated high school and he was going to go to the university of the Southwest in Hobbs, New Mexico. And, uh, yeah, he said that the coach was looking for a center back. And, I, of course, I needed a team. Yeah. I, it all, uh, yeah, all it took was one phone call. One phone call, 10 minutes, and, you know, he I, I guess he heard enough good things about me that he just offered it. Yeah. And I, I was blessed because, I mean, I, I think that summer I, I told myself, like, if I don't find anything, uh, like, I'm done, you know. I'm going to hang up the boots. Like, it's – it's, it's, it's whatever, it's time to accept the fact that it's done, you know? And I think, you know, like like I said, we all go through our downs, and that was just an up for me. That was just, like, step number one to the college game. Mm -hmm. And definitely not easy. I mean, college is the same thing. I mean, it was just as bad over here. And uh, the first day, I had the, one of the forwards, too. He was from English. I mean, English. He, he was English. He was from England, Liverpool. And uh, dude, dude was a, dude was insane big and fast too. And sure enough, man, I mean, he he ate me for breakfast. He knew like I was a fresh dude straight out, and yeah, he knew nothing about me. So he t he picked me apart. And the good thing is, is I I really impressed the coach. But 
because St. Mary's was NCAA and technically I tried out, like, you know, because they had my name in some of their, um, in one of their papers or whatever, like they did an investigation on me. So, you know, my, my acceptance, my, my playing, you know, it, it, it was, it was affected by, I, I didn't play any of the preseason games and sure enough, I mean, you know, the team's got to move on. So, yeah. um, luckily another defender came in he stepped up and, <laughs> He played for the rest of the season. I, I rode the bench. I mean, it's okay to say it. It's 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 a fact of life. Sometimes, like a lot of players, they they think they're gonna go in there, they're gonna start, and some players do. But I mean, only eleven can start. So just yeah. sometimes yeah. you just gotta keep going, you know. But um, I was thankful to just be patient because um, there was there was new staff, there was new coaches. Um, I did get playing time. I ended up I ended up starting a lot of games, you know. And it, it just, it feels good to play. It feels good to be able to, to one day just look back and say, you know, in high school, I was just looking to make the team, Yeah. you know? Yeah. And then once I made the team, I was like, you know what, I'm going to try to make the varsity team. And then after the varsity team, I was like, you know what, let's go to that, uh, what was it, UT, uh, or that one, that one uh, camp that, that we went camp, to, that yeah, college. That was an uh, awesome right? camp, right? Yeah, yeah, we got that exposure. That's oh, St. Edwards. It was at mm-hmm. St. Edwards soccer camp. Yeah, and we got that exposure. And once I felt like we could play with them, I was like, oh, okay, like you know, maybe college is something that we can do. You know, and now that I'm in it, I could feel you know, like with the people around me, with the support, with the coaches, you know, with the players I've played with. I mean, there's players that I played with in that university that are doing very well now. I mean, I know one player that's already playing pro. Like just just things like that, where I hear good stories about them, it, it makes me feel good. It makes me feel like you know what, like I'm glad I took that step. I'm glad I took that risk. Yeah. And even even at same age, I'm glad I still took that one week trial. You know, because you know it made me realize, oh, you know, I gotta go back to work. I gotta go back to the gym. I gotta get faster. I gotta like get quicker. I gotta your, get better. your flaws in order for you to get better. Exactly. And, you know, I was thankful because there was even a player there that took a, a bit of his time. He was a senior and he believed in me. He thought I was going to stay long enough to make the team. But I mean, you know, I, I had that offer in that summer and I took it. I, I didn't look back since then. But that guy that took his time, you know, I, I'm i grateful for him because, you know, it would be at seven in the morning for two hours. And then I had class at 930. I was like, dang, you know, like it was very cut time, but he made it work. What would you say the difference, for example, you're naming the this player, right? Um, mm-hmm. What was the difference between him and other players in the team? Oh, this guy, well, first his passion. I mean, I'll, I'll give him that. Like, I, I, I got, I was, um, I was lucky to see them play. I was lucky to see him play. And that dude never stopped running. I mean, there was, there was the guy that um, was, I guess, the bench for him or like that would sub him in. That, that's what he would like. He would make a mistake, and it would be very, you know, it would be very costly. He would make the mistake, and it would take him forever to get back, you know. And by then, the defense is down by one. You're trying to shift the over formations, boom, counterattack. And then if the, goalkeep- the goalkeeper was a, was a good goalkeeper, solid. So that foot would save him a lot. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, like, what this guy had, unbelievable speed. And uh, and he had, he's got good balls. Like, pretend like a Marcelo, but with the right foot. Because he was – but that Marcelo, you know, that, like, good ping ball, he had that vision. And what he was good with, he had this good chemistry with it, with his right winger. So they would do a lot of overlaps, you know. He would give the ball and then ask for it back, you know, fake this way or fake left and then give it back to him and then overlap him. And by then, give it to the center mid, boom, he's already on the run, you know. Mm-hmm. Like, he wasn't afraid to go take those advantages, you know. Yeah. Because the right winger was a very short dude. He was fast. But as a defense, like as a defensive mentality, you wouldn't want to leave him to go cover you. You know, yeah. if he has to, he has to be mobile. But as a defender, you would be very conscious of it. But him, he was very confident with the ball. He was very, I'm gonna get this. I'm gonna get this cross. And he would, he wouldn't control it. Nice, you know, like he wasn't afraid to, you know, throw a shoulder in there and beat you to it. It was good. That's what I liked about him. And so when I when he would train me, he would make sure he would make me tough. It was like, you ain't got to be the biggest dude out there. You just have to have the biggest heart, you know? He had the biggest guy that, you know, the, yeah. yeah. So I was just like, all right, just like, if that's, if, if, if that's really what it is. And that's helped me because I've kept that mentality in college. And, you know, there's there's players, like I said, that Liverpool guy. There was a, a guy from uh, Curaçao. 
he was a center back, big old dude. I'm talking like big as in muscle, big as in tall, but he's huge. And this dude would not mess around, man. If you got near him, he would hit you. He didn't care if he got a card. He didn't care if he got the whistle blown. He made sure you knew that if you came at him again, you were going to get hit again. Like, well, it was just like that mentality of the way he, the way he has it, you know? I don't care who you are, I'm going to take you. I don't care who you are, I'm going to defend you. Like, I got you. Like, come at me. Yeah, and so I'm glad he taught me that. I'm glad I, I was able to train with him. Cool, cool. So then when you went to Southwest, right, what would be the hardest thing there? Well, first speaking, and I know shoot, a lot of the players will agree, the field. The field? I mean, like, I don't want to be that player that complains about the field, but if you've ever played in that field, it, it's pretty bad. But if we're talking about, like, uh, like the actual soccer game, um, the thing about Southwest <laughs> is the first coach that was there, he was a very ping the ball kind of guy. Yeah. So, like, from the start of the game, boom, kick it back to the defenders, defenders swing it, you know. If we could play it down the line, then let's play it down the line. You know, we want to try to find the midfielders, but a lot of our attack would be through the, through the sides. So what that would mean is, you know, if it was swing around, the center back would look a lot for the, the forward ball. And me, like I told you, like, as a player, you have a preference of playing. Yes, there's some people, there's some teams that can do that. There's some teams that are successful doing that. But me as a person, as a player, I like possessing. I like, you know, give me the ball here. Oh, I'm going to make a run here. And still trust that, hey, like, we got this. Like, we're, we're in a good position. You know, that's how I was trained. You know, like, we cover each other's back and we're good. Yeah. And so starting, you know, having to, having to relearn that system, you know, because I just came from Rush and then having to go – back to this system of like, okay, we'll get the ball, you know, if you can find it, full ping it. If not, find the center mid. You know, it was a, it was very like, find the long ball first and then short ball later. Like the short ball was your safe ball. Yeah. And in rush, it's kind of the opposite. The short ball is your safe ball. I mean, the short ball is the ball you look for. Yeah. The long ball is the one like, hey, if it's there, take it. I mean, don't shy away from it, but let's play short ball. Let's play tiki taka, you know? Yeah. Right. And so I think that's, that's what I didn't like, you know, is, having to realize that the coaches are different just as players and you're going to have to adjust. You're going to have to play with that system because whether I liked it or not, my first year we were like, they were, we were successful. We went to playoffs. Mm -hmm. I mean, whether like, whether I agree or not, the coach was onto something. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you just got to adjust. Yeah. I think that's the hard thing is just having to readjust, you know? What about outside soccer? The life of college uh, outside soccer? Like college player? Well, I mean, St. Mary's, San Antonio is a very, it's, it's a nice town. It's a nice city. I mean, you got the downtown area. You got a lot of things to do, you know. And in Hobbs, you really don't have nothing to do. I mean, our downtown area, like a two-minute drive. I'm telling you, like, just you, you pass by it real quick, and you're like, oh, shoot, we pass it? Oh, okay. You know, like, it's, we really have, the, the joke of Hobbs is we have one long street. And it's true. It's called Lovington Highway. It's, it's like. You can, if you drive that street, you can hit 20 cities. Like, just that's it. All right, maybe not 20, but you could pass by, like, three cities. Just take that. You know? Yeah. And it's just, it's very difficult because I, I know it's on you. I, I was always busy. I had homework. I had work study. I had, you know, practice or, like, my own practices and yeah. my own workouts. Like, I was always busy. And at Hobbs, I'm busy soccer-wise, but there's – as a, as a player, there's only so much you can do. You, you can't be the whole day out there, you know, I'm like, all right, I'm going to do mile run, and then right after, I'm going to do agility. And then, like, you think you can, but then after a while, you're just like, oh, shit, like, I got school. Like, you know? What, and so that's Hobbs, why, what was the difference between Hobbs and San Antonio? Like, what was the reason why you couldn't train in Hobbs? Like, Well, Hobbs, I had a lot more time. So, like, that's that's what I like about Hobbs is soccer wise it's it's perfect because you know you really don't have like your schedule's not that full mm -hmm. like school ends by latest two o'clock you're done by two you know and then practice is around that time but hey you want to stay out there for a couple extra hours boom you can we have a little indoor like the back gym but it's, it's like it's kind of an old gym but we use it for indoor you want to use that go ahead um, we just opened up or the they just opened up a facility called the core. It has an indoor, like, turf field. So, like, you can go over there, you know? Mm -hmm. San Antonio, it was – I was I was really worried about my, my I guess, education. I had a lot more assignments there. Mm -hmm. uh, it was more rigorous. 
I'll, I'll give it that. St. Mary's is very rigorous compared to the University of the Southwest when it comes to the education. I had assignments that were long and that were multiple for all my classes, guaranteed. And at USW or University of Southwest, it'd be, and eh, like, I have one assignment today, maybe two tomorrow. I have a paper due by the end of the week. It was very separated. And that same area, you know? Go, go, go. Yeah, and I had to work too, well, like work study. So I had to put in a lot of hours there. And then, um, and just social stuff, you know, like I had a girlfriend, so I, I you know, had to take care of that, you know? I was um, in Hobbs? No, that was in uh, St. Mary's. St. Mary's. So I feel like if if I wasn't disciplined in the actual time that I would give myself with that soccer practice or like that that mile run or whatever I had to do, then I would never practice. Yeah. I had to wake up earlier before my classes would start to train with that one guy, and then yeah, towards the end at night, that's when I would hit the gym. That's when I would go into um, like the racquetball room, yeah. practice on my clutch, you know, Did you take stuff a like that. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. during the day, heck no. I couldn't. They were very strict about it? Mm, did I what? They were very strict about it? Yeah, like that kind of thing. And I, that's what I like about University of Southwest is that you can, you can practice. I can wake up way before class and it won't even be a bother, you know? Oh, snap. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> like it won't even be a bother. Like, like as long as the field is good, like, yeah, you can use it. Yeah. Like, no one cares. Yeah. All right. So let's talk about – so – about two weeks ago, I had a high schooler ask me how to balance girlfriend with soccer because he really wants to pursue soccer. You know, he it's mm -hmm. his passion, you know, like any other high schooler, but he doesn't want to lose his relationship with his girlfriend, right? Of course, yeah. I mean, my response to that was, you know, he's he's a young dude, really still in high school. Don't worry about it because life is going to change like this quick. You know, but what since you were out there, San Antonio playing college ball, what what advice would you give him? Uh, yeah, well, I mean, you're not wrong. I like that advice. I mean, bluntly, yes. I feel like life does throw you a lot of curveball, a lot of changes. So I wouldn't really worry about it. But being there in St. Mary, I, a lot of what me and my past girlfriend did was we talked a lot. You know, um. I made sure she understood that this was something I really wanted to do. This wasn't something that was like a hobby. This wasn't something that I just do for like to pass the time. This was something I really wanted to do. I really wanted to be in that team. I, I mean, I even, I put money that I, that I put a hundred dollars one time to try out, like to do a second trial. Like I, I put time and money. Yeah. I'm serious about this. And I made her realize that I made her understand because there was things there was times where you know she did things where i was like do i really gotta go you know do i gotta support but at the same time i understood i was like okay this is something you're passionate this this means something to you right so communication is a, is a big factor but at the same time you have to be you have to be conscientious about that so if you are going to have a girlfriend you got to work you got to work around it you know because in college you got you got to keep in mind if you're gonna have a girlfriend you still got school you still got practice and then you still got, if you're going to work, I mean, if you're blessed not to work, then that creates more time, you know, for you to have with your girlfriend. That's lucky you. Yeah. But there's a lot of people that, you know, that you know that that's not possible. So then you got to work and then you still got to fit, fit in what the extra conditioning, the extra, like, you know, mm -hmm. just to be that much better of a player. And then finally find the time with your girlfriend. Uh, your time is going to be really consumed, but if you're going to want to have the best of it, then you got to work for it. And it's always important to make sure you both understand that like it's not gonna it's not gonna work 100 percent of the time. You could be like, okay, date night's Friday, mm -hmm. right? Like whatever, it's set. And then for whatever reason, I mean, there's times where my coach calls a meeting literally an hour. No, there's times he called the meeting 15 minutes before it started, and we had to be there. I mean, there's coaches like that. There's people like that. You can't control that. You just have to show up, right? If your coach tells you be there in 15 minutes, you can't tell him, hey, that's not enough time. He's expecting you to be there in those 15 minutes. Yeah. So just, I mean, that's a little extreme. I hope there's not a lot of coaches like that. Right. My coach, is, <laughs> yeah, my, my coach is a very extreme coach. So, I mean, that dude, whatever. But hopefully, you know, that it doesn't happen. But it, it, it might. I mean, it just has to be in a form of understanding, you know? Yeah. But I agree. I think the best advice you can do as a college player or even just as a, as a young player, like someone that just wants to keep going with the game is try to, you know, pick your priorities, you know, 
if your girlfriend means that much to you, then she should be able to understand, you know, that this is your passion and she'll work your way around it. You know, if it's meant to be, it's meant to be. But I, I, I was, you know, I was, I had a girlfriend in high school, whatever, but I, I, and then she came to college with me. And then after that, like once I had this other opportunity with the University of South Wales, she didn't fall through. It happened. I couldn't, I couldn't stay back. It was an opportunity for me. It was something she knew that I was passionate about from the very start. You can ask all the high school people that knew, like anybody that knew me, soccer was it. I wasn't going to waste it. Come on. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, if, you know, I'm glad, happy for him, you know, girlfriends, cool, but just work around it, you know, you got to, got to be able to work around it. Yeah. So let's go now based on a day in the life in Eric, right? Now you're, mm-hmm. you're at US, the, um, South, the University of Southwest, right? What is a regular training day for you? Like a regular day? Okay. Uh, well, for me, I like to, you know, because uh, it's a little bit different for me. I take online classes instead of actual face-to-face classes. So me, I like to wake up. I like to eat breakfast, you know, go to the cafeteria, whatever, and then go on a run. Not necessarily like a killer, killer run because, I mean, we still got practice later and I mean, there might be a conditioning day, whatever. But, yeah, I like go for a run, you know, a good, nice little two-mile run. There's a little route right there around the university that we like taking. Um, if I don't run, then I'll go to the gym and do, like, a like a jump rope exercise, maybe some ab workout, maybe a little bit of leg workout, you know, with some light dumbbells, 15, 20s. Nah, 15s. Let's nah, not go 20s. 15s, 10s. And then after that, it would be lunch be like my my cool down time or like my lay around time if i have homework get that done get it out of the way early before lunch time um then lunch time and then after lunch is usually yeah by then we have to know okay are we conditioning okay meet at the golf course which is like uh what is it two point no it's two miles and something yeah and then or if we're going to the core play indoor or if we're meeting on the field and those three practices are different if it's conditioning day my coach really likes to kill us. So a conditioning day would be, if it's on the field, it would be something like a circuit and it would be the whole field around it. And it would be different things. It'd be like a station, you do ladders and then, you know, the hula the hoop thing, you know, jump and then do like suicide on the side. It's just a whole thing, you know, you do some crazy stuff or it'd be the golf course. He, he does love long distance running. Mm-hmm. So the golf course is a two points. I think it's like 2.25 or something like that, but he makes us do two laps. So that's almost five five miles, I would like to say. It's like 2.75, there you go. So almost like five mile run. Um, if it's at the court, um, the court also has an indoor track, so we might do some conditioning there. But normally when we go to the court, we do like agility work. We'll put the cones, yeah, we'll put the cones like a triangle or whatever, you know, try to side shuffle around it or some suicides um, or other agility workouts. He, ha- he actually has a lot of agility workouts that, I, I prefer I prefer agility workouts more than long distance, so I really enjoy the the, the core practices. Cause and then after that, that's what we usually do. We'll do possession, maybe a passing <coughs> drill, something complicated, something tight space. He likes that a lot, and I I, I like that a lot. It makes you think quicker and be light on your feet, you know. Mm-hmm. And we usually end it with a five v five at the end, uh, just game scrimmages, and those are fun too. Cause I mean, as a defender. I like shooting. Well, I'm starting to get more comfortable shooting. So, I mean, it's always nice to go up there and attack. And then the the field practices, those always change. Because um, it just depends what he wants to work on. He could want to work on crosses. So, I mean, that might be a good 30 minutes, you know, of just like, okay, we're going to send the fullback and then make him dribble down and then cross it and then we got to put it away. Yeah. Or, okay, do a little – you know, midfield situation and then midfield sends it to the winger, something like that. Um, but, yeah, yeah, but we're, normally it's like a possession. We'll do a shooting drill because, you know, we have the open spaces. It's a lot of like the over the air uh, passing or crossing it on the ground. And then uh, we usually open up, just, just open up 11 v 11 and we'll do situations. I mean, it, like sometimes the, the coach will just call it because they're all right, free kick right there. Yeah. And then just see, well, like, how do we react? And then, I mean, sometimes well, it'll be in the middle of the game. He'll just call it, like, BS. And it really gets to you sometimes. You're just like, what the, like, why are they, why are they calling it, you, you know? Yeah. But it, it trains you because in the game, I mean, I've, I've had so many games where the refs just call it nonsense. 
And then you're just, you can't do anything about it. You can't change it. So it's just, all right, move on. Like, set it up. Do what you got to do, you know? Yeah. But, and then at night, that's when it's more free time. That's when everyone's different. For me, like I said, I, I'd like to go maybe um, eat, eat maybe not the cafeteria food. You know, go eat something else, roses or something. Um, maybe a little night gym sesh. Uh, there's times where we do the rope a lot of agility stuff, footwork stuff, and then we'll play with the ball, juggle a little bit. Um, or we'll just work out. I mean, I know a lot of the times at night, like as a soccer player, we don't really do heavy lifting. Yeah. But me and my buddies, like we, we like to, you know, put put on a couple extra pounds. So sometimes we'll just go heavy. Mm-hmm. We'll lift just heavy and, you know, just do an extra workout at night. This is on an average day. Yeah, this is, this is like Monday through Friday. This isn't like, I mean, the weekend, yeah, we, we get lazy. Yeah, I'm you would rest, pretty sure. Way. Yeah, we are resting. Especially game day, right? Mm-hmm, exactly. Yeah. So even during season, you guys would do exactly the same thing? Uh, Yeah, well, that's more of a of during season because um, we might have double uh, two-a-days. That's, that's the only difference between spring season and, like, actual season. All right. Um, is you would probably add another practice. So we probably do uh, either uh, 6 a.m. morning runs, you know, instead of conditioning uh, after practice, we'll just do it, you know, in the super morning before classes start. Um, or if we do do two a days, we could do, um, we usually have it like at 12, between 12 to 1. And then that's a, it's a quick little thing, you know, it's like passing drills or possession. Mm-hmm. Then we go eat. And then after that, We'll have the regular practice, the two three hour practice. Yeah, I mean, but other than that, yeah, on a re- on a regular day, it's m- more than likely what I do. Yeah, that's, that's your typical day. Being mm-hmm. a life and error. Yep, there you go. Okay. That's it. All right. So, <laughs> so after going, of course, you still have like two two more seasons. Uh, right now I have one left. Well, I don't know what this whole COVID thing, but. After this year, it's supposed to be one that, so we'll stick with one. We'll stick with one. All right, so let's say you're back, I'm pretty sure, at hometown, right? So mm-hmm. how's been life since, since coming back? back? Yeah. Um, Due to this all COVID-19 and the incident <laughs> and all that. Well, I got lucky because we left a day before or – because it was starting to get chaotic that week. That last week where spring break was supposed to happen, the week before that, that's when it was chaotic. That's when coaches were calling us constantly. That's when the group message was blowing up. And China was making headline news, you know. That's when it was barely starting. But we already we already decided to come back home. And I, I told my parents, so we weren't, like, freaking out or anything. I was just like, okay. Uh, and we head back. And sure enough, my coach tells me, while I'm back in EP, like, you know what, like, we're going to have to clear the dorms. Um, no one's coming back to the university. Like, there's no more school. Uh, everything's online. And I was just, oh, like, this is getting serious. Like, for them to cancel face-to-face classes. And, I mean, we could have gone back because there's, there's, you know, there's other people that are like, okay, well, I can't go back home. I can't afford a place. I don't have a car. Yeah. So, if you got to stay, I mean, they let you stay. But <clears throat> just, for, just for it to happen like that where I didn't even take all my stuff. Like, I went back with my brother. My brother would happen to be there. He was there for work, and he took me back, but I couldn't take a lot of my stuff. I had enough clothes for, like, six days, I want to say, six, seven days. Yeah, so, I mean, I was using that. It, yeah, I was using that a lot. And then, well, we went to San Antonio because my brother picked me up because we had to go to San Antonio for my sister's um, my sister's cheerleading uh, competition. And then, well, yeah, man, I mean, that's when it got even more crazy because when we got there, we heard that San Antonio, there was already cases. And so, you know, that's when my parents, that's when my parents, I think, began to, like, realize that, okay, this is more serious than a lot of people are making it, you know? Because at that time, a lot of people were making memes. Twitter was, I, Twitter was pretty funny. I'm not going to lie. Like, I'm not going to say, you like, I didn't laugh at a couple. Like, yeah, some of them were funny. But, but I, I think, think I think at that time that's when I started thinking about it too. Like, oh well, now it's here in the U.S. Like, I don't, I don't know. If, you know, that's when, I don't know the jokes are as funny. You know? Yeah, because I remember you first posted. Uh, you were telling me like, no, I'm gonna stay. Place you know, like you have the chance to go home or stay, and you were like, I'm gonna stay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Like, dude, I'm going. Uh-uh. <laughs> and yeah, I actually told us like, 
you can either stay here or you go home and don't come back and i was like Ooh. i mean as as much as hobbs like hobbs, hobbs is good with the people that i'm there with like they make it worth like going back and playing and you know my teammates um it, or just being independent like i know a lot i know i appreciate a lot of my free time yeah and i know when i come back here it's a lot of okay family stuff uh, yeah family stuff i gotta you know prioritize my time i wish i could be with my friends all the time but you know there's things i gotta do with back at the family I gotta help out I gotta do responsibilities you know and so i like the independence over there but at the same time i am appreciating here because I mean, El Paso is just it's home, you know? Yeah. Like, the, the first couple of days I was here, we went to go shoot back at, at the high school, and it was fun, you know? I mean, you invited me to a practice, and I was supposed to go, but, you know, then that cold. I'm telling you, my whole parents got all quarantined on me. Yeah. I've been, I've been here for a good two weeks. I think two and a half, maybe, but... So how's your training? Well, your training right now during quarantine. Like, what's a day in life in errands during quarantine? Oh, well... <laughs> I have a nephew I got to take care of, so I can't do as much training as I'd like, but I do, I have been doing a two-mile run every morning. I don't put an alarm, to be honest. I like resting, so just once I wake up, I'm just like, all right, like, got to get this run out of the way, you know? I usually wake up at 7.38. That's usually when I go. Um, do my two-mile run, you know, try to try to get back in shape because I, I was slacking it first week, you know? First couple of weeks, I was slacking it. I was, I was focused on, like, my sister's competition, but the San Antonio stuff, and then the COVID thing, like, should I go out, you know? Yeah, and then I feel whole, a lot of us oh. just, like, zoned into our houses, just completely shut yeah, down. Everybody's yeah, just feeling like, the mood, and, like, I'm, I don't want to train. I don't want to work out right now. You know, exactly. I'm just going to – just, I don't know, just be here. <laughs> yeah, right, like, because you, you were just like, oh, what's safe, you know? Like, what's – like, what can I do? What can I do, you know? very worried but you know getting back into it um and then just on my own like i don't have free weights here so i just i do push-ups i do lunges just a lot of like calisthenics i guess like just self-weight stuff you know and then um from then my nephew wakes up he's a five-year-old so i i i do have to be watching when my parents are are working still from home and they do a lot of like conference meetings and stuff so they can't be distracted you know with the kid and stuff so yeah, I, I, I'm basically taking care of a five-year-old. And then um, at night, uh, he, he actually likes playing soccer, too. So sometimes I'm just kicking the ball with him, you know? Like, I, me, personally, I try to, like, be as accurate, as precise. You know, me working on it, making sure, like, even though it's something small, something, you know, maybe just one touching it. But making sure my one touch hits him right in the speed, you know? Like, to him, he can wear whatever he wants because he's five years old, you know? He's not expected to kick it straight to me. Uh, I'm 22. Like I'm, I should be able to okay kick it to me wherever and be able to you know return it back. Hit it right then. And then yeah, and if he leaves or whatever, I mean, which he does sometimes. Like sometimes he doesn't want to play every day, whatever. I'll, I got a couple cones. I just dribble in and out, you know. Uh, just something simple. Like uh, I, I don't, you know, I don't have a goal or anything to shoot at or anything. So it's a lot of like juggling and stuff. How many amount of cones do you have? Four, <laughs> literally just four, and I know I know I only have four because it's enough to make two goals like on the ground. So I'm like, okay, like if if, if I ain't got nothing on the field, we'll move two goals. So sometimes it's just simple, you know, like just simple in and out. Or like I know I saw like your your um your video with the box, and you try to like juggle and keep it there, or like even your dribbling, how you try to like, keep it in that box. Yeah, like I've done that before with the juggling, just try to just keep myself. Like, like within, within that, that box. box. You gave me ideas to create four cone drills, so thank you. Man, you're, you're welcome. welcome. Honestly, you send, send me that video direct, direct link. I'll, I'll be on it. <laughs> it's still okay. So, how's your nutrition during quarantine? Oh, that's, that's tough, tough, honestly. Yeah. But that's because that's, that's not even fair, fair though. Because that's my mom. Like, like bro, I'm not gonna say no to my mom's cooking. That's that's a good mistake. That's a mistake to move. Yeah, okay, like, because at the University of the Southwest, it's known, like, the cafeteria food ain't flavorful, man. It's healthy. I want to I wanna say it's healthy. I want to say it's what you're so, It's better than, like, McDonald's. It's better than all the fast food stuff that you could spend your money on over there. Yeah. But when I come home and my mom's got that flavor, dude, I can't say no. Yeah. So it's a lot of, I mean, I'll tell you what, we bought a big bag of 
bean and rice. So I mean, I've been eating rice and beans a lot. And that's something. Yeah. But I don't want to. I don't want to sit here and be like I've been on a diet. I mean, it is very hard to do in quarantine because if I could, you know, more prep and be able to buy the stuff that I wanted, or just in simple fact, like just be just. I've been to the stores a lot. That I they sent me to go to the stores. I'm the one that's been going to Walmart a lot, and they're really it's it's slim picking. If I don't go in the morning, forget it. I went in the afternoon one time and I got a few things. You know, there was a lot of things were missing. Yeah. So, so I mean, it's sometimes, sometimes it's just whatever my mom makes. Sometimes, sometimes it's good, good healthy stuff. stuff. Like she's, she's made me one time a uh, uh, tuna salad. salad you know, I, I, I always like, like that meal that uh, it's light. You can eat two bowls. You know, it'll fill you up and you won't gain as much. You know, um, chicken. She she likes to use that a lot. Uh, fish because of Lent. So every Friday, you know, something fish, something not meat. So that helps too. Fridays are usually light meals. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but I mean. I had pozole last night. Yeah, let me. So, <laughs> so I mean, you know, I've, I've been making my mistakes too. Yeah, but that, that's why I like running in the morning because it makes, makes you feel better. better. <laughs> like I burn some of it off. You know, I, I start off fresh every day. Yeah. All right. So, um, I had another. So, what, what's after college? What's your? How? Where do you see your career of soccer right after college? Hopefully, everything gets better, right? Obviously, with the COVID nineteen. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I think I think that's my mentality. Is I I personally don't feel like this is like gonna affect us in a major. Way. Like yes, we might not see soccer until the summer, June, July, whatever. Yeah. But I don't think it will be an all year thing. You know, like this storm shall pass. You know. So if anything, if if any of this year has taught me and this you know this talk with you has like re like reminded me is I can't give up on soccer. There's times where I wanted to. And it's let me, you know, not quit. And, you know, being in quarantine, just a lot of thinking time, you know, you spend a lot of time on yourself. And I just noticed that if I believe that I can keep going, and if I feel like I'm not, like, washed out yet, you know, if I'm not, like, if I feel like I can keep competing, then I'm going to keep going. I'm not going to guarantee anything, you know, because I've always said, like, St. Mary's or education was going to be the way to college. And now soccer was the way to college. So I'm going to keep my options open. You know, I've, I've had invites from other players that they want me to play in their team. I'm going to explore those options. I, I want to keep playing for as much as I can. But at the same time, I do want to be realistic and just say I'm not going to, you know, quit on life or, like, if soccer really isn't my go-to path in life or – you know, soccer, soccer just, just really, you know, know this, this is it. it. This, this next, next year that's coming up, that this is it. You know, every year I've enjoyed it. Every year I played and I played to the best. Maybe I don't have the best games and maybe I don't have the best highlights that I can produce. But to say every day, every game I played and I played with, with heart, worked hard, you know, like I'm happy. Yeah. So, I mean, that's what the degree's for, you know. I'll, I'll do FBI, you know, that's a, that's a good – um law enforcement goal of mine you know that's another part of me and that's another side of me another goal that i want to get to i want to hit that fbi or like the federal stuff because i feel like just now you can see it in the covid like in general people really think that like we're in control that we got stuff and then boom virus hits and shoot chaos yeah you know people are running around headless like oh shoot what do i do what do i do buying all the toilet paper yeah exactly <laughs> Oh my God! But just things like that, you know. And if I'm a, if I'm a impact the law enforcement or impact the government anyway, you gotta go to the top, man. Yeah. So hopefully, I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful, and I honestly, I do see myself continuing to play in some way. Um, I've also told myself that I, I wouldn't mind coaching. I think me, the like my personality, I'm not afraid to talk. I'm, I'm not afraid, afraid to yell. yell. I, I know a lot of coaches that, that, that have shaped me into the player have yelled at me for a good reason, you know. I mean, there's, there's some coaches, coaches that just yell, yell you know, like just, just to yell. 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 Just so, yeah, yeah, but, but I, I feel like the, the people, people I played with and, you know, how, how eager I am to learn about the sport, I think coaching would also be something that I would consider in the future. I don't know about immediately. I think I would like to maybe start my career a bit. You know, and then explore the coaching option because yeah. I mean, you can even see it in the in the 
through the major leagues, I mean, the coaching position could be 70, 80 years old, you know, and as long as you, you're still thinking, you can still walk, you can still, you're open. Yeah. So I actually got this question on Instagram again two weeks ago. Um, what's better, club soccer or school soccer? Damn. Uh, for me, club soccer. soccer. School soccer shaped you, but club soccer made you. There you go. I, there you go. I, I agree with that. I don't know if that's just me personally, but that statement, yeah, that's how it, that's perfect how it worded. Because high school soccer, yes, I had to overcome the physical stuff. I had to overcome the fact that, like, you know, I wasn't, like, a good soccer player. I wasn't even a decent soccer player. I was, like, poor, like, one to five, one. You were there. So, like, that, it did shake me, you know? But what made me, yeah, like, me right now, the player that I am right now, like, the way I think, the, my, my vision, vision, I guess. guess. Um, um, the the one-touch, two two-touch touch play, play yeah, that would be the club soccer. And, and not only that, that, but I felt like I, was, I got closer to my club soccer friends yeah. because, because of the travel, because, because of the adversity, too. too. A lot of them were from the Northeast, Northeast which, I mean, a lot of them, them like, that side of town is known to be a little little hard and a little rough. And the stories that they would tell me, like, I don't know, it humbled me. Maybe, maybe, maybe they are lying to me, maybe they're not, but I mean, a lot of stories that they told me, I know, I know one player for sure ain't lying to me, and his story made me realize, like, dang, I, I do got it good, you know, like, my parents are, you know, they went to college, you know, um, they, they're successful in their business, in their, in their profession, um, they had three kids that, like, are healthy, you know, like, there's a lot of things that, like, I used to take for, for granted, and now I'm just like, you know what, like, playing with these guys, these guys are humble, these guys are good, hard workers, you know? Yeah, I, I think, think that's, that's why, why <laughs> like, if, if I had to pick one, I think I would pick club soccer. soccer. Yeah. But I, I, I like the way you phrased it. Uh, high, high school soccer, so- what? High school, school shaped me, so- but... Yeah. High school soccer shaped yeah. you, club soccer made you. There you go. Yeah, yeah I, I like that. that. So, let's say, let's talk about, like, about once everything goes back to normal, right? Mm-hmm. All of a sudden, you're in your last senior game, right, for college, and then a, comes an opportunity to play third, second division pro soccer here in the United States, but then all of a sudden an opportunity out in Europe, let's say, or somewhere outside of the United States, would you take it? Definitely. I mean, either way, I'd take the Europe one or I mean, here, because I've learned that if you don't take it, they're, they're going to go. Like the USW one, I, I kid you not, that guy came up to me that day and he said, hey, I could have the coach call you. Like, like, let me text him real quick. And right after practice, sure enough, he gave me my number and, and he called me and he gave me the scholarship offer right then and there. And it was, he said, you want to come or not? Yeah, he, he literally said, you coming or not? And I didn't have time to ask my girlfriend at the time. I didn't have time to ask my parents. I didn't have, you know, I didn't have time to really like sit down and plan it. He just said, you coming or not? Yeah. And I, and I, I, I get it because like coaches are scouting. I'm pretty sure he had a couple other recruits waiting in line, you know? And, and if I didn't say yes or no, he was, all right, thank you. You, you have, have a good day. Have a good life, you know. It was nice meeting you. Boom, Boom next call. Mm-hmm. So uh, definitely, if, if one of them used to, if were to call me, yeah, yeah it's Division two, two, Division three, three whatever. whatever. Dude, I've been in JB. I've been in Forza United, United, which I bet you anything, no, no one in El Paso probably remembers, remembers unless you were in that team. Yeah. You know, like, like I, was, I was in the bottom of the bottom, and I don't mind. I mean, there's there's great players that came from the bottom. Like, like that, that came, came from those teams, teams you know, and they, they came up and they're just like, oh, shoot, like, like they're standout players. Mm-hmm. I mean, one, one player right now that, like, is blowing people's minds is Alfonso Davies. He, he used to play for MLS, MLS. And, and now that dude's tearing it up with Bayern, Bayern. shoot. And, and Bayern's a top, top, top European club. Mm-hmm. Sure, they've, they've had legends come out of that club, so. Yeah, man, if an opportunity like that ever comes, hopefully, if God wants me to keep going, sure, I'm definitely taking it. Yeah. I mean, any any advice you want to give? For example, Chuku FC is mostly for for kids, right? Like the ages thirteen and under, uh, because those are actually like for my, my personal opinion here in El Paso the best market. But mm-hmm. obviously, Chuku FC, the YouTube channel, is mostly made for any individual. You know, <coughs> the way I saw it was created to motivate players and to keep training. I mean, I'm 23 and I got the opportunity to play at at, uh, at UPSL. You know, and mm-hmm. and I thought, well. You know, let's make training session videos and all this fun stuff. Take on that social media, that influencer life type of deal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Slowly but surely, you know, and uh, 
I feel like if you get more stories of, of the other players out there, I feel like other players will come in and I think more people will just watch. Um, any advice that you would give to those players? Um, that want honestly, to I think I think the, the that's how this poster we have, have at the gym, gym at the University of Southwest, Southwest and it's uh, there's, there's been countless times I wanted to quit, quit and, and I just never did. did. Like, it just, it's, like I said, I could go back so many times in my life where, yeah, I really wanted to quit. I just had where I went to my room and cried, you know, like, no shame. I cried. I, there was people that didn't believe in me where I would hear the, the rudest comments or I would be told the rudest comments straight to my face. Like, there was people that had no shame, you know, no, no holding back. But in life, I mean, dude, in general, like, Things, things are going to happen. happen. The, the worst, worst is going to happen. happen. The, the, the things, things you think aren't going to happen are going to happen, and then they're going to hit you, and you're just going to, like, you're, you're going to expect it to just come back up. Like, like that's, that's life. That's literally how it is. It'll run you over. It'll back you up. It'll throw you out the window. It'll treat you like garbage. It'll tell you you're garbage. It'll make you feel like crap. It'll make you cry, beat you down, but the next day, you just got to wake up and, hey, all right, I got a new day. Yeah. Got to keep going. And so, you know, any soccer is soccer. I played the middle school soccer, but hey, it was enough exposure for me to love the sport. It was enough for me to keep wanting to play. That little middle school kid, little fifth grader that was just running around not knowing what the heck he was doing. But hey, as long as he put the ball in the back of the net, that's what matters, right? Yeah. So just that, like, keep going. Be obsessed about it. Learn from it. Love learning this sport. Now, that's what makes you want to play more. Juggling. juggling, I know I me, mean, I hated juggling when I started playing, but now, now like, it's, it's calming, it's soothing, like, like for you to just be able to, okay, I got this, this, this is second nature. Yeah, sure. You want me to walk with you? Yeah, yeah like, you want me to walk next to you while I'm juggling it? Yeah, I did that with my mom, but we're doing, like, you know, just walking around the neighborhood, and I, I test myself, I'm, all right, let's see how far I can go. Yeah, all right, so for sure, yeah, since we're playing that much. For sure, Chuck, well, yeah, see, we'll make a training video with four cones this time, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> just something, bro, like, just, I think that's why, like, I think that's why I like the sport so much, man. Like, I love, I love learning. Bro. We'll probably even donate balls, just, just in case. Cones, <laughs> balls, you know, ladders, anything you guys want, I'll, I'll take it. I need, like, two or three balls, I'm going to be honest, because the first two are you going to be popped or, like, I'm going to lose them. So the third ball is just for experience, you know? <laughs> All right, any message you want to give uh, to anybody, family, friends, whoever you want? Um... Well, to those that supported me, you know, whether it was behind the scenes or whether they told me to my face, you know, thank you. It's much appreciated. I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to be here and act like a celebrity, you know, but, you know, just being able to be an El Pasoan that A, went to college, still going to college, still playing, and didn't go back home. You know, that's a big stigma in El Paso. I, I hate to say it, but... There's people, people that leave El Paso, El Paso and then, you know, stay there for a year or two, and they always come back, back and then they, they stay here, you know? It's, it's not bad. bad. I love El Paso. Don't, Don't get me wrong. I love my hometown. hometown. I love the city. I love everything about it. I love the people. You know, I love the sport of it. I love the fans, everything about it. But it's it's something, it's a, it's a mentality, and it's why coaches don't like scouting at El Paso players. It's why Rush, I got scouted outside of El Paso. We went, we went to, to PDT, PDT, which is in Phoenix, Arizona. Arizona. We, we went to, to the Colorado, Colorado tournament. tournament. You know, it was a lot of out-of-town exposure that I got, I got blessed with. Mm -hmm. But a lot of Ohio kids got talented, and maybe they're not in these clubs. Maybe they don't have the money to be in these clubs, and they all rely on high school, you know? And sadly, uh, that's that's the rep that a lot of high schoolers get. I mean, El Paso, El Paso kids get. So... I'm, I'm glad, you know, whoever, whoever supported me, thank you. Whoever, whoever didn't, didn't give up on me, thank you. I appreciate that. that. And, you know, even those that, that, that did give up on me from the start or were giving me little negative comments, thank you. Because if you guys didn't do what you guys did, you know, if you guys weren't as hard as you guys were on me, like, then I wouldn't have been able to get back up, to try again the next day, to push myself to be better, you know, to do those extra drills, to do that extra sprint, to do that extra push-up, whatever it was. Like, it pushed me to be better. And, and I, I love it. it. I mean, people, people still, they're still going to talk smack. 
today. Yeah, they, 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 they still, still to this day, day will be still talking smack, bro. Like, like it, it's, it's never going to end. So you just got to do what you got to do to prove them wrong. You just got to do so that way when they say it, it's not a fact no more. It's a lie. That's, that's, that's my mentality now. Like, I'm going to keep going. So whatever you had to say, like, it was a lie, bro. And that's when they come up to you and they're just your friend. They're like, oh, yeah, man, I remember in high school, like, we used to ball it up fine. And I was like, dude, honestly, you didn't even care about me. But, yeah, sure, I'll be the bigger person, right? It's always about being the bigger person. Well, thank you so much, Aaron. Um, again, guys, links will be down below for social media in case you guys want to follow him, follow his journey. Hopefully, we'll see you playing USL. You know, never, you never know when you can play for the locomotives or no, man, never know. Whatever, whatever comes first, right? Um, yeah, we can thank play you, man. Against each other, it. For sure. Hey, man, man shoot. Sure. It'll be a good game. Yeah. Can't wait. Hopefully, I'll, I'll play the whole 90 minutes by the time we play against each other because right now, it looks like I'm just playing the last 10 minutes. <laughs> hey, man. So, minutes, minutes are minutes. Take them. Yeah. So, entonces, pues, let me just pause recording, bro, and we'll just... any Anything last you want to say? Anything? Uh, thank, thank you, man. man. Thanks, 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 thanks for considering, considering me. me. I mean... I know you have, like, like not, maybe not a lot more people, but, I mean, just got, got other people, so. Yeah. No, it's, it's always good to, you know, make sure that, that I, you, and you and I have been connected, connected you know, this whole time, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hopefully Chuka FC will one day donate balls and cones like crazy. Hey, man, shoot, if they do, send them my way. I'll be at my way every morning, just pink, pink. All right, let me just stop recording real quick.